happen to notice anything different about me today? Hmm? That's right, I'm dressed as a doctor. But wait a second, I'm not a doctor, am I? No, you guys know me as Fellowship Pickering's Children's Ministry Director. And uh, I'm not, I'm not dressed in the right clothes for that job here at church. So I should probably change. That's better. Do you guys think uniforms are an important part of having a job? That's going to be our first spot to discuss today. So I want you to answer that question as a family. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you guys. But if you can pause and discuss that question, do you think uniforms are an important part of having a job? Pause and discuss. I'll see you in a bit. All right, welcome back. So you just had a discussion of whether you think uniforms are an important part of having a job. So if you and your family, or maybe you were all split on this decision, but if you thought that the answer is yes, give me two thumbs up. Uniforms are an important part of having a job. And if you decided the answer is no, give me two thumbs down. Uniforms are not an important part of having a job. So Lots of uniforms are pretty important when it comes to certain workers. Those like the big heavy jackets that a firefighter wears and the, the masks and everything that makes up a firefighter's uniform. They're made of like really special thick material that protects the firefighters from fire. Right. And then it saves them from getting burned. It's actually, they have to have that uniform to do their job. Um, a sailor. They wear a life jacket as part of their uniform and so that would help them if anything were to happen on that ship that life jacket would save their life as part of their uniform if they have to go in the water a surgeon a doctor like what i just was wears brand new clean scrubs to keep germs out of the surgery room brand new gloves mask everything like that it keeps their surgery area clean and keeps their patients safe and the type of uniform a person wears has a lot to do with the job that the person will be doing. So in addition to what people are wearing, I promise I'm getting to the point here, what else do people need as equipment for their jobs? What are some other important pieces of equipment? So firefighters, sailors, doctors, chefs, they all need special equipment to do their jobs too. Each person can only succeed in their jobs if they have everything they need. So. That's what today's big idea is. Repeat after me. God gives us everything we need. Let's do that one more time. God gives us everything we need. You got and it. Just like uniforms give firefighters and sailors what they need to stay safe and do their jobs well, God gives us everything we need to face anything that may come our way. So what? I'm going to let our friends at Grow TV share this week's lesson with us once again. Here they are. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. With your host, Carl. And your co-host, Cassie. Where we learn, we have fun, Talk about Jesus and all that the Bible has to offer. So once again, welcome to Grow TV. Today's a great day, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm feeling a little paranoid, like someone is right behind me. <laughs> That's silly me. Why would anyone be right behind me? Hmm. Anyways, I thought it'd be fun if we took this time to do a staring contest. So what we're gonna do is just stare real intensely at each other until someone blinks and they lose. Ready? One, two, three. Hey girl. Yeah! What's going on? Were you hiding back there? Yeah, of course. Why? Why not? Well, I, Never mind. So Carl, I heard you were a little paranoid. You heard I was a little paranoid? From who? Who said I was paranoid? <laughs> I'm not paranoid. Are cameras in here? Did they bug that little horse? Carl, calm down. I heard you say it earlier. Oh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. 
What's got you so worried? It's just sometimes this world is crazy, and I'm not ready to go and do the mission, you know? But I have been packing all my stuff to get ready to go. You want to see? Sure. It's just a little bag of stuff that I need. <sighs> Let's see. We got this fuzzy helmet thing, because you never know when you need a fuzzy helmet. Uh, we have a whistle, just in case I get scared of the dark, and I just blow a whistle. I don't know what that would do, but you never know. Let's see. I got this thing, in case I want to kind of change up my style, you know, and be like, hey, <coughs> I got yellow hair. Got a racket for playing tennis. I don't know how to play tennis, but I would like to learn. And I have this terrifying mask. I don't know why, but I just have it. <laughs> And this Batman mask. So I can say, I'm the Batman. And that's it. That's it? Yeah, well, I mean, for the first bag. How many bags do you have? Four. Ah, that's not as much as Teen. What? 14. I have 14 bags. All right, so you're holding on to all of this because you think you need it for the mission God has given you? I don't think I need it. I know I need it. OK, well, I just want to let you know that's not true. What do you mean? Have you ever heard of the armor of God? I don't think so. Well, in Ephesians, God shows us we're supposed to put on a type of armor, and that's all we need for our mission. So what does the armor of God have? A flamethrower? Nunchucks? A macaroni necklace? Spider monkeys? Sharks with lasers on their heads? Well, not quite. It's the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the helmet of salvation, and a few other pieces that are essential for going out and doing what God has planned for us. So you're telling me I don't need my fuzzy helmet? Nope. The hat with the funny yellow hair? Nope. My tennis racket? Nope. Not even my Batman mask? Nope. Believe it or not, God gives us everything we need. Wait, what did you just say? God gives us everything we need. That's our big idea! Today our big idea is God gave us everything we need. So let's all say it together on three. One, two, three. God gives us everything we need. Well, that was great, y'all. I guess I was wrong in thinking that I needed to pack all this stuff. God will give us everything we need for our mission, and God will take care of us. I'm kind of wondering what this does. God. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Grow TV. Did you know that we have a uniform? The Bible talks about how the world can be a really difficult and even sometimes scary place. But in the middle of a lot of really hard things, we have protection. We can stand up for things that matter and for people who matter because God is protecting us and helping us with everything we need. Remember we talked about the helper last week? So one of the biggest jobs of the helper is helping us to be brave when we need to stand up for those who need help. So as Christians, our uniform is given to us by God, and we are going to talk about what that uniform looks like today. So each part of that uniform helps us in a different way. So our Bible story today comes from the book of Ephesians. We're still in the New Testament, just after the Gospels. We're looking for the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. I'm going to put that um, scripture reference up on the screen for you. And if you guys can pause and read it as a family. So grab your Bibles, pause me, and read the story together. I'll see you in a bit. scripture all the pieces of the uniform that we are to wear Ephesians verse 14 just so you know the version I'm reading might be a little bit different than the version that you read at home Bibles come in all different versions um, so it's okay if this doesn't match exactly you can totally match it with your own scripture though but I'm starting in verse 14 it says stand firm then with the belt of truth can you stand up and put your hands on your hip like you're wearing the belt of truth so stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness. So cross your arms across your chest and put on your breastplate of righteousness in place. Verse 15 says, and with your feet fitted, like you're wearing shoes or sandals, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So we're going to run in place for that one with our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And then verse 16, in addition to all of this, take up your shield. We're going to put our hand out like that. Take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Verse 17 says, take the helmet of salvation. So put your hands on your head like this. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Can you wield your sword there? 
which is the word of God. And verse 18 says, and pray. So put your hands together like this and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So I'm going to go through those motions one more time. Are you ready? We have our belt of truth. We have our breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are fitted with shoes or sandals, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, our shield of faith, our helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and praying. Now it's your turn. Who thinks to remember all the parts of God's armor and the actions we did? I would love you guys to pause me and see if you can remember them all. And moms and dads, this is one of those moments I would love some pictures. Send me those pictures of your kiddos and you guys too trying to remember the actions. We would love to see the kids at fellowshippickering.ca. Send us those photos. Pause me and see if you remember all those actions. Go for it. Are we really putting on an actual belt of truth and carrying around a real sword of the spirit? I think if you were carrying around a sword, people might get a little freaked out. It might be a little counterproductive. Just like we saw in that video, the parts of the armor of God are not real weapons like we might see in a real battle, but they are spiritual weapons that God gives us for our protection and to help us live the life we're supposed to. All of us have a shared purpose to love God and to love others. The armor of God will help us to do that every single day of our lives. I have another little bit of scripture to share with you today. I'm going to put it up on the screen, but I'm also going to read it here from my own Bible. We are looking for 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. So my Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Even though they may not be real weapons we can hold in our hands, they are powerful enough to help us protect ourselves and others in any situation. All right, families, are you ready to play a little game? Uh, this is going to be a game where you're going to be pausing me a lot, but I'm going to read a little scenario and I'll put it up on the screen as well. And you're going to pause me and discuss as a family what piece of the armor of God you would put on for each scenario. Are you ready? So here's the first one. When your parent tells you it's time to read the Bible and you just want to watch TV instead. So I wrote down the breastplate of righteousness is what I think you would need to wear for that. Your family might have come up with a different answer. And as long as you guys can rationalize it, talk together and agree on it and figure out why that's the answer you came up with, it's totally acceptable. Uh, here's the next one. When you might want to blame someone else for a mess you made. So again, the answer I wrote down for that one was the belt of truth. I think you'll need the belt of truth for that one so that you can be honest and wear that belt of truth to help with that. Um, again, if you came up with a different answer, mine are not right, yours are not wrong. Uh, it's, a, it's a time to discuss. So as long as you can justify it, your answer is good. Ready for the third one? When you see two of your friends fighting during lunch. So for this one, I wrote down those shoes of the gospel of peace. So I just felt putting those on, that's a great opportunity for you to share the gospel and spread that gospel of peace with those around you. Be that peacemaker. Number four, here we go. When someone asks you tricky questions about the Bible, trying to make you stop believing in God. So for that one, I thought you need to put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. It is tricky when someone is fighting you with questions, questions, questions to try to throw you off your own foundations. And so wearing that helmet of salvation, just protecting yourself and guarding yourself and wielding that sword of the spirit, let God do the work. He knows what he's doing. All right, and the last one, number five, 
when you are sad because it seems like God is not answering your prayers. So for that one, I wrote down the shield of faith. You got to guard yourself, arm yourself with that shield of faith. Have faith for that one. Again, if your family got different answers for any of these, awesome. Because all of those pieces of the armor of God are so important. And hey, you might want to wear every single one of them for every single one of those scenarios. That is awesome. Our memory verse stays the same for the entire month of May. So we've already been working on this memory verse for two whole weeks now. So let's read the memory verse together. Um, and then you guys can pause and try to practice it a little bit. So here it is. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. So pause and give it a try on your own now. Awesome job. So just before we go, I always want to close us in prayer. Um, I'll pray for a little bit and then please pause me and pray together as a family. So bow your head, close your eyes, and let's pray. God, please help us to remember to put on the armor of God every single day. We know it protects us and helps us to go and tell others about you. Thank you so much for giving us everything we need to be brave and to face the tough things in this world. Families, if you want to pause me and pray now, that would be awesome. Have a great week. I'm going to put on my doctor's uniform and get back to the ER. No, no, Kelly, I'm not. I am a children's ministry director. I'm going to carry my Bible, arm myself with the armor of God, and tackle the day.